Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adulting 101 um, Residential Life Edition at SUNY L. Westbury. Just bringing some more information your way. Um, today's topic is budgeting as a college student um, and really being tight on money. Um, this is particularly relevant through COVID um, as many people have lost jobs um, and we're not as economically stable as we have been in, um, prior to this, this time. I uh, so just want to show you guys some resources, just a quick little PowerPoint um, so that you guys can just enjoy um, and hopefully use these resources to your advantage. So tied on money, budget on one on one for college students. Don't be afraid to talk about money. Like talking about finances with anybody involved in helping you pay for things. Um, so that may be your parents, your guardians, aunts, uncles, um, who may be assisting with college tuition, um, transportation costs, rent. All right. Um, you also want to get ahead when you think about your expenses, right? Think about all the things in the year that you might need to spend money on. Uh, that could be outside of like your utilities and your main bills, but that could like be unexpected expenses like clothes for job interviews. Um, it's also really good to track your spending. Like what are you spending on? I know that some of the conversations that I've had with students, I've learned that students spend a lot of their money hanging out and eating out um, pretty often. That's not a bad thing, um, but then you start to realize how much money you spend on food a month. Um, and then you think, well, what's tangible? How could I have used that money for something else? Um, so don't be afraid. Like, I know money seems like a really big topic, but it's the one thing that makes the world go around, and we need to educate ourselves um, on how to use it effectively. So when you think about your expenses, here are some things I'm talking about I want you to think about. Um, your textbook for future semesters, like housing and food costs. So though there's no housing on campus this semester, um, that won't mean that you don't need somewhere to live, right? Whether you're staying at your parents' house or you're working to pay rent somewhere else um, or you're being taken care of by a parent or gu another guardian and you want to provide um, them with a little bit of money to help curb that cost, right? Clothing for season changes or jobs. All right, you may have clothes that fit now for the winter, but what happens when spring comes and the clothes are too make you too hot for the spring but also don't fit you from last spring? Right. Those seasonal changes, we don't necessarily think about those being cost, but having to buy more clothes for opportunities like that. Additionally, job interviews, right? making sure you have the right fit to be the person to get the job. Um, transportation, whether that's the LIRR, that's your car, insurance, gas, the bus, right? like those, those are costs we often don't factor, um, particularly as you have to get to where you need to go, whether that's your job or coming on campus for a lab. Uh, just focusing on those type of transportation costs that are kind of more silent than we like to think about. Um, student loans. Most of us don't pay student loans um, while in college, um, but it's not a bad idea to cut down on some of the interest, right? Also, creating an account for fun. So as I mentioned earlier, right, we like to hang out with our friends. We go out to eat, you know, um, particularly now that restaurants are open again. Um, creating an account that limits how much money you're going to spend when you're hanging out. Um, and also creating a savings. I'm um, just thinking about a savings and emergency fund about the things that you want rather than the things that you need. Um, some tips for saving money. Right? Buying used books um, or loaning them from the library or open source learning um, resources. Usually you can find those online. Please make sure they're legal. Um, we're not encouraging that you download illegal books. Please do not do that. Um, take advantage of student discounts at clothing stores. Like there are plenty of stores like Gap, um, H and M, and a few others that have advantage of student discounts, particularly during the holiday season. Um, only put on credit where you can afford to pay back. So for a lot of folks, credit feels like this free open money, but we don't really realize how much we have to pay that back and how quickly. Um, interest on credit cards really do add up. Um, so my number one tip for credit is if you're putting it on a card, make sure that there's a plan to pay that back and usually before the due dates due so that you don't have to pay ridiculous interest rates on what you owe. Um, eat out less, right? Use the groceries in your house. You've already spent that money to feed yourself at home. Feed yourself at home, right? Those little trips to McDonald's or Buffalo Wild Wings, 
on five guys like scale those back a little bit so that way you can save that extra money in your pocket to, be, to go other places where you want um if it's possible pay your student loan interest um particularly those that are unsubsidized um so an unsubsidized student loan is one that garners interest as you matriculate through your studies um, and even though there's a grace period and you're not paying, right, you're still paying a day, you're still getting compounded with a daily interest fee. Um, your subsidized loans, the federal ones, don't have um, interest on them while you go through college, and those are the differences. Um, but if you can pay some of that interest down, you'll you'll be better off for the money when you graduate. How to create a budget? Um, determine your income. Like, what are you making? What do you bring home biweekly from? any of your jobs um, after taxes, right? Then you calculate your expenses. Like what bills do you have to pay? What subscriptions, right? Is it Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus, right? Do you have to pay rent, heat, light, gas? Um, do you have a car? Do you have to pay for car insurance? Do you have to put gas in your vehicle? Um, think about your monthly expenses and what you have to pay. Um, and then calculate the difference. The difference is obviously what you're going to have to spend afterwards. Once you calculate the difference, you can start adding a little bit of some extra stuff, right? Adding in that, that fun budget, adding in a savings budget, right? and then determine what you want to do with your savings. What are you saving for? Is it a trip, right? Um, is is it this the, that new jacket you wanted? Um, like, what, what are you saving for? What are you going to do with that? Um, and make it a habit. All right, remember to be realistic. Uh, I make it a habit to check my budget um, about every two weeks when I started to create one. And then now that I'm fully into a budget, right, I only look at my budget once a month because everything is pretty much concrete and set in stone. But that becomes a habit. And I make sure that you commit to your budget. Um, be realistic with what you want to save um, as well as your income. Better to under and to underestimate your income and overestimate your expenses. Um, that way you'll never end up in the red as you're operating with your budget. Um, digital apps to help with, bu with budgeting. All of these are free, um, but Mint is really good. It opens as um, a budgeting app. You can open it right on your phone. Um, pocket Guard, it has a really cool feature that tells you, hey, what's left in your pocket after you calculate your income and your expenses. Um, and then Clarity Money, um, it's definitely a newer app, but recommended by um, people at, like Nerd Wallet and other um, budgeting um, financial spaces. Uh, so definitely, like, if you want your budget in your pocket and you're not a traditional person who needs to write it down or doesn't have it on Excel sheet on your computer, definitely use one of these apps to help budget. Um, there are apps that you can pay for. For, um, and SUNY Westbury doesn't um, endorse any of these apps, right? It's just things that we thought might be good resources for you, um, and then you can use them to your own advantage. Uh, but there are also resources in here, out there that cost money, um, and if you choose to use those, that's fine, um, but I'm just here to keep a little bit more money in your pocket. This is like a sample budget um, for some folks, um, and the reality is a lot of us are working more than one job. Right, we need to supplement that income. But just imagine that you had income at one job um, for $1,105, and then income on your second job is $955, right? So your total income that you'll see is $2,060. Based on some monthly expenses that you may um, put down on your list, right? Maybe that rent, um, your savings, the car payment, car insurance. Uh, for some of us, health insurance, right? We've got to look out. Um, some of us won't have those costs, right? Um, uh, maybe a phone or cable bill, an electric bill, your subscriptions, right, may fall in that other category. Essentially, you're left with your spending money um, of $750, and once you do the math for daily, you're probably spending about $20, $25 a day. Right? Everybody's budget's not going to look like that, right? Now everybody's not going to have monthly net income of um, $2,000. Um, some of your bills may be way higher than a lot of this, right? Like, Rent alone for a lot of people is more than $600, right? Your car payment is probably $200, right? So you need to adjust the budget accordingly to, to your bills, right? But this is simple of what a budget would look like. So some financial literacy tools. Um, Cashcourse.org. Um, it helps with budgeting and financial tools for college students. It has a budget wizard tool um, that can help you budget in real time. 
um, which is really cool. And um, 300 dicks, 360 degrees of financial literacy, um, which is a public service created by accountants. It's a resource that's particularly good for helping you understand your loans. Um, these are some websites you guys can go to um, to learn more about how to navigate your financials as a college student. Um, I am by no means an expert, um, but there's definitely some things that I had to learn as a college student, and hopefully I got to pass those things along to you. Right. So hopefully you guys um, enjoyed a little bit of my resources. Um, hopefully this helps with budgeting and navigating um, the world around you. Um, as always, always tune in to Residential Life at SUNY or Westbury. Um, we're offered by email. Once again, my name is Kaya Simmons. You always can email me at simmonsk at And looking forward to the next Adulting 101 session.